Marjorie Kemp comes from the time of Julian of Norwich. She is less well known than Julian, but she is nevertheless a significant person, both in terms of literature and in her spirituality. Julian, with her revelations of divine love, wrote the first known book in English by a woman from around the time of Geoffrey Chaucer. And then, not long after that, Marjorie Kemp wrote her own book, which some consider the first autobiography in English. It's a little bit more personal than Julian's writing. Marjorie's book, simply called The Book of Marjorie Kemp, tells of her adventures in her life, her travelling abroad and across England as a pilgrim, and speaks of her spiritual insights. The two ladies contrast with one another, and they complement one another. Julian spent her life in an anchorite cell, dedicating herself to prayer. Her spirituality, we might say, is that of an introvert. Marjorie, by contrast, comes over very much as the extrovert. She was a laywoman throughout her life, but nevertheless felt a distinct calling from God to go out into the world and to be a pilgrim and to have adventures in his name. In a sense, Marjorie can be seen perhaps as a prophetess. She heard the voice of God and indeed Jesus and Mary and other saints, and she wasn't afraid to tell the high and mighty what she thought God was saying, even confronting on one occasion the Archbishop of York and other notables, and getting herself into trouble, being threatened with burning at the stake as a heretic. Marjorie is very much a Marmite person, she was prone to weeping and sobbing profusely and at high volume and this wound people up, although some people seemed to get her message and get the spirituality that she represented. Julian and Marjorie actually met each other and conversed and had spiritual discussion and counsel together, as Marjorie later referred to it, holy dalliance. Marjorie went to visit Julian in Norwich. They were a generation apart, but it's rather lovely that we have a little snippet of that meeting between the two of them and the things that they said, the topics they touched upon. Marjorie was in fact born around the time that Julian was receiving her visions when she nearly died in 1373. Julian is associated with Norwich, Marjorie came from King's Lynn, on the west of the county of Norfolk, or as it was then known before the time of the Reformation, Bishop's Lynn. Marjorie was born into a well-to-do family. Her father, John Brunham, or perhaps John Burnham, which is more likely because that's a local place name, was the mayor of Bishop's Lynn. And so Marjorie was a woman of means. And as a young woman, she married John Kemp, and she records in her book that she had 14 children. Whether we take that literally is open to question. Perhaps those 14 may have included stillbirths and miscarriages. And one thing that she does report in her book is that following, I think, her first child's birth, she went into a very deep postnatal depression or psychosis and she committed self-harm. She wanted her life to end. She was in a terrible mental state. Julian's salvation comes from a physical infirmity when she nearly died and by contrast in Marjorie's story. She is saved by God, not from physical illness, but from mental illness. And she records in her book a turning point when one day she wakes up in her bed 
and finds Jesus sitting there at the bottom of the bed wearing beautiful purple and he speaks to her and effectively heals her soul and she comes out with a phrase which when we think of Julian we associate with her the phrase all shall be well and for Marjorie there was a phrase that came to her it is full merry in heaven and perhaps those two phrases hint at a similar kind of sentiment all shall be well it is full merry in heaven things will work out even if they seem grim our eternal destiny if there is as we believe this loving creator is to be in a place where all is made right where there is peace and calmness of mind and wellness of being in every sense. Marjorie visited Julian in 1413. Julian was about 70 years old, Marjorie a generation younger, and Marjorie then felt this great calling to go out and be a pilgrim across England and even visit places like Rome and the Holy Land and Santiago de Compostela in Spain and she records her adventures in her autobiography which she wrote some years later. Julian's book The Revelations of Divine Love kind of went underground for a few centuries. It was disapproved of by Protestants and was so hidden away following the Reformation and a few of those early manuscripts did survive, fortunately for us, and it's become something of a publishing phenomenon over the course of the 20th century and now into the 21st century. And Marjorie's book hung by a thread. It was completely lost. A little extract, I believe, survived over the centuries and it was known that there was a book by Marjorie Kemp but it was completely lost until 500 years later, in 1934, a single handwritten copy was found buried in a private library. And so it was published. And it presents to us some wonderful insights into Marjorie's spirituality, which could be quite eccentric at times and also insights into the medieval world and the life that Marjorie lived in the early 1400s. I bought a copy of Marjorie's book quite a few years ago now, a lovely hardback version. I was kind of aware that she existed and that she was associated with Kings Lynn in the west of Norfolk, while Julian is over in the east of the county at Norwich. So I thought Marjorie is a good person to investigate and to read and I couldn't really get a handle on her book and her themes and I found her just too eccentric and these bouts of sobbing that she was given to. I thought hmm, I'm not really warming to Marjorie and it was quite a few years later before finally I got her. And I realised that she is an eccentric, she is an extrovert, she's a Marmite sort of person. But to me, I understand now that she has an intense spirituality running through her soul and coming out in very profound expressions that take no prisoners very often. And I began to see that really Marjorie is a person who is a medieval charismatic. She's a Pentecostal. She is full of the Holy Spirit. And those kinds of people maybe have a tendency to wind you up at times. But there's something about Marjorie I cannot deny. There is a mark of the prophet, a prophetess within her. And finally, as I began to warm to her and read her book anew with a greater sympathy, 
I realised that there was a, an intriguing sub-theme working its way through many of her narratives. Very often Marjorie describes how she's out somewhere on pilgrimage and gets into some real scrapes and her safety is threatened, sometimes with being burnt at the stake or something like that. And then very often in her narratives someone will appear from nowhere and rescue her and bring her solace and comfort and deliverance and salvation. And it struck me that there is a theme as if angels appear left, right and centre in Marjorie's fascinating medieval narrative of her life. So much so that I was inspired to put together a narrative story of my own based on Marjorie's writing and her adventures, a short story that I call Marjorie's Angels and it tells of some of her stories written in my own way as if observing what's going on and each chapter bears testimony to the angelic help that Marjorie receives. It's a bit of a miracle that Marjorie's book survived having been lost for 500 years that single copy, and now she follows in the wake of Julian of Norwich. Julian is a publishing phenomenon, and Marjorie, year by year, decade by decade, is garnering more and more interest as a literary person with a fascinating insight into her world and her life, and with a rather unusual, and if you manage to get it, arresting spirituality. There's a little quote with which I'd like to finish from Marjorie's book. One of her encounters with the great and the good and church leaders was with the Bishop of Lincoln in her day, Philip Reppington. And after listening to her and warming to her and understanding where she was coming from and perhaps recognising the mark of the spirits within Marjorie and within what she was saying. After due consideration, he gives her a rather lovely word of blessing. He commended greatly her feelings and her contemplations, saying they were high matters and full devout matters and inspired of the Holy Ghost, counselling her soberly that her feelings should be written. And so she takes this to heart and she renders those thoughts and feelings and the stories the narratives of her life in her book, The Book of Marjorie Kemp, the first known autobiography written in English by anyone, probably written in the 1430s. And on another occasion, in her spiritual devotions and her prayer life, Marjorie felt as if Saint Mary was speaking to her heart. And Mary says, Daughter, well thou art blessed, for my son Jesus shall flow on so much grace in thee that all the world shall wonder of thee. That lovely potent phrase, all the world shall wander of thee, seemed completely untrue for 500 years with Marjorie's, kept, Marjorie's book having been lost. But now, news of Marjorie and her fascinating story is beginning to indeed filter around the world. And those of us who are based in Norfolk are proud to associate ourselves with Julian of Norwich, perhaps Norfolk's most famous daughter. And I'm proud to have taken an interest in Marjorie Kemp and to acknowledge her as a daughter of Norfolk, who is also worthy of a place in spiritual traditions. 
and with literary significance.